we come to it. <coughs> One and three. Tarees. Tarees. Amen. Amen. Aye. Tarene. Tarene. I'll hold. I'm waiting for you guys to lead out, see? The yolks, afros, emols, kai, kirio, a soup, free soup. All right. Grace, harit. That's a, a good word, grace. Grace is uh, the opposite of works, isn't it? Grace is the opposite. I mean, when you start, if you're saved by grace, you're saved by grace. That's it. Nothing else. It's by unmerited favor, is what it means. Unmerited favor, Tarese. Grace to you. Now, the Apostle Paul, he uses this same greeting in 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, and many of his later epistles. Now, he had a lot to correct this church with, or these churches. This is the churches of North and South Galatia, okay? He had a lot of correction for them. In other words, a lot of whipping. He was going to whip them real good later on. But he says, grace to you. All right? Grace to you all. All right? They use plural second personal pronoun. And arene, peace. What's the, what is the word for peace in, in Hebrew? Shalom. Shalom. That's an easy word. Shalom. Shalom. And Bollinger, if you look those up, that's on page 575. If you want to write it down, you get a Bollinger. So, like it. It's uh, the absolute, uh, it, it is total void of confusion, turmoil, any type of harassment. That's what peace is, all right? Grace and peace. No trouble. That's what, that's what peace and shalom means. No trouble. No war, no arguments, no fighting. And uh, Paul the Apostle was just kind of setting them up because, boy, is he going to lambast the, these churches. He said, grace and peace to you, because they had given themselves confusion. They had given themselves trouble. Okay? People had come in from outside and given them grace from Apo. All right? That one, you can look up page 40, that little old uh, preposition there, Apo. All right? Do we have a uh, apology? comes from this word, apology. What does apology mean? What does two Greek words? Apo logos. Apo logia. Okay? Apo, and that means a a from message or a word to you. In other words, it's a reason for what you believe or what you've done. Apology. That word apo is part of that word. Apo. Theo. From, all right, now this is the source. Grace and peace to you from God. And that's obviously singular, singular masculine. Apo patros. Theos. Theo Patros. All right? God the Father. Patros. Okay? God the Father. And what is the word for Father in Spanish? Padre. Padre. All right? Pater. Uh, Pater in Latin. All of them come from Greek. All of them. This is, this is the... The mother or father language of the Western languages right here. Himon. Now, Himon Kai Kiryu, uh, Kiryu is uh, in parenthesis, about halfway parenthesis, because it's not in some manuscripts. Uh, peace from God the Father of us and Lord. Okay. God the Father of us and Lord. Now, what is the word, that the equivalent in Hebrew for Kiryu? You know what it is? In Hebrew, for to you. All right. Jehovah. Jehovah. All right. And Jehovah, Jesus Christ. All right. Jehovah. And what, how do the Jews, when they come to the name Jehovah, what do they say instead of Jehovah? Abana. All right. Abana. So that's what we have here, okay? We're learning two languages at once, and maybe a little bit more, a little smidge of others. Jesus Christus, all right, Jesus means Jehovah saves, all right, Yahshua, that's who it is in the Old Testament, Yahshua, Jehovah saves, and Christos is Hamashiach, Mashiach, all right, the Messiah. 
Jesus the Messiah. All right? Yahshua HaMashiach in Hebrew. Jesus the Messiah. Now let's go over to 1 and verse 4. 1 and verse 4. Can you read this one? <coughs> 2. Gantos. The Atom. See that, uh, that mark over that epsilon up there? That's an H. Okay? That's an H. So it's Hiatol, and then we have an H above that Ypsilon also. See that right there? It looks like a U. All right. Keep hair. All right. And then Tone, Harmarchion. Now let's look at this Harmarchion in just a few minutes. Okay. Himon, Lupos, Xlate, Himos, X, X, two, two Ionus, two, two, and Ness, and Ness Totos, Poneru, Kata, Tophiloma, Toothiu, Kai, Patros, Himo. All right, see those rough breathers there? All right. <clears throat> the one having given freely himself. Who is this? This is Jesus or Jehovah. Jehovah means what? What is Jehovah? All right, he shall become. Here's what it looks like in Hebrew. Right here. It's like this. He who shall become. All right, I don't point it because we don't know how to point it. They point it in the, the Hebrew Bibles, but they won't pronounce it. Because after they had written the Hebrew Bible, they got a, uh, when they got the law, what did the law say? Thou shalt not use the Lord thy God's name in vain, and they were afraid to pronounce it. So they didn't. They would substitute it and call it Hashem or Hadabar, the word, okay? The name of the word, the name or the word. And John the Apostle, he refers to this Jehovah as the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word kept on being the inseparable part of the Godhead because it kept on being God. All right? That's the death of the Word. In the beginning, kept on being Jehovah. All right? Jehovah kept on being an inseparable part of the Godhead. You could not separate him from, from God because he is God. Okay? John 1, 14 is the... Fulfillment of the Jehovah title. Title of the Sarks again, and the word flesh he became. All right. The one having given freely himself on behalf of the sins. Tone Hamartio. Now, what have you heard people say about the word Hamartio? Uh, it means to miss the mark. Is that correct, brother? No. It is not correct. It does not mean to miss the mark. There is a Hebrew word that means to miss the mark, but not this Hamartio. Chatha means to miss the mark. That's Hebrew. And then one lexicographer said of Chatha, he equivalents over here into the Hamartia. That was there. You know, even the lexicographer can make a mistake. And so he brought it into the Greek and he says to miss the mark. But this means, but the word Hamartia means to go out of bounds. It's simply what it means to go out of bounds. It, that has the idea of a river running over its banks and causing destruction. All right? A matter of. All right? In every language, the root of this word, hamartia, uh, means to go out of bounds. It does not mean to miss the mark. Chatha means to miss the mark, the Hebrew. But now you know something that Thayer didn't. <laughs> you can correct that, Mr. Thayer. All right. And the one having himself on behalf of the sins, all right, the we have gone astray. The sins of us, we have gone out of bounds. We've caused others and ourselves destruction by doing, going out of bounds. Of us, entity plural, first person pronoun, all right. And then it says in so what or how or in what manner, that's a little adverb there on page 290, 290 that's, Hopos, all right, see the rough breather on that thing? Hopos. X L L A K. That he might snatch us out or rescue us. Third person singular, second aorist. 
subjunctive with a voice. Let's look at this now. Let's look at the tense, the mode, and the voice of this verb. Okay? That he might snatch us out. It comes from pyro, that means to grab away, and ek. Just like that word ek up there, that exit sign, to snatch out. What it means here is to snatch out. Now, second errors, do you remember what second errors did? Second errors. Let's get the idea of the action. Okay? That he might snatch us out. How did Jesus snatch us out? All right, of the clutches of, of sin and the clutches of the world and the present age and the, and the ruler of this age, which is Lucifer. All right? The old devil, Satan, the Avalos. Okay? The tunnels. How did he snatch us out? Second error is peculiar action. Then. How long did Jesus stay on the cross? He was on the cross about nine hours, wasn't he, before he gave his spirit out. So that would be punctiliar action, all right, but it was a little bit of durative linear from nine to three, huh? On the clock. So that's what we call second errors. Now, first errors is punctiliar action. Punctiliar, point time action, just like a sharp needle point, okay? So this action here is punctiliar, but drawn out just a little bit, because it took him nine hours on the cross of Calvary, plus 33 years in person. He was tempted all time during those years, but he did not succumb to the temptation, did he? Second error is subjunctive moist, that he might snatch us out. What's the subjunctive moist? What does it de uh, denote in this verb and in every place in the New Testament? Where it talks about what? How does God save you? You have a choice. You have a choice. That's what we call volition. Volition. You may or you may not do it. Huh? You either may or you may not. Now, you're not going to be saved unless the Spirit of God convicts you. The Bible says it convicts every man of sin. Okay? But your spirit has to agree with his spirit and homologia. What does homologia mean? That means confess. Say the same thing that God already knows. You tell God you're a sinner, he already knew that anyway. He knows you, he's omniscient, isn't he? All right? And that depends upon you. And then how did Jesus do this? The mode of affirmation in the middle voice. Think about that for a while. That he might snatch us out for himself. He did it for himself. Okay? He did it himself. You didn't have anything to do with that part of it. He did the suffering, and he paid the price of your sin. All right? Now, in uh, in John 1, 14, there's a little old Greek word there. Come, have anyone, can you go there real quick and just look at that? John 1, 14. I will go. I, I will go sarks again, though. All right? I O Logos Sarks Again This is a pretty neat little word right here Alright, again I hold those sarks again And the word Sarks means what? Carne in Spanish and it means flesh. And the, uh, oops, Jehovah, flesh, he became. That's Aristotle. Middle voice. Middle voice. How did God get into this world? He brought himself into the world, didn't he? Right? He brought himself into the world. Then if you go down to John 1.18, does anyone have your Bible there? John 1.18. <laughs> Look at that one. If we have another middle voice, every time he talks about the Lord saving us, are you there, Rebecca? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. All right. Now, what translation is that? New King James. New King James. The only begotten what, Brother Randall? 
The only begotten God. God. The only begotten God. God began himself. Okay? It's God. The only begotten God. He has what? <coughs> He has what in King James? Declared him. He has declared him. Brother Randall, where's that what's that word come from? Two Greek words. Echinago. <clears throat> Ek means what? Out. Ago means what? I lead, I bring, I go. So what does it say there? He led himself out. Middle voice. Again, middle voice. He led himself out. And every place in the New Testament where it talks about the Lord saving us, he did it for himself. He didn't send an angel. Now, there's no witness to say, well, he sent an angel to do it. But it says he did it himself. He didn't send an angel. He did it because he wanted to. Because why? John 3, 16 says, what? For what? For God so loved the world, all right, that he gave his own begotten son, all right? The son... In space and time, John 1, 14, Jehovah became flesh and dwelt among us. All right. And then he might snatch us out. Get the idea of the verb. That he might snatch us out, rescue us for himself. Remembering us, he might do it. You are going to have to surrender. He will save you if you let him save you. As simple as that. You have to say the same thing. You have to homologia. You have to confess. He might snatch us, he moss, choose the plural, second person pronoun, out, ek, to aionos. All right, aionos. Out of this age. Who is the God of this world, this age? It's not world so much. It's not universe. It is this age, this period of time. The word age means marked off period of time. There is a time. If you look up at this time chart here, that's what this is. This is a time chart. Way back here in eternity past, it goes through time and space here and into time, what we know as time, a marked off piece of eternity. Right here, in that marked off piece of eternity, God became flesh and dwelt among us. All right? He dwelt among us. And this is called, from right here, all over here, basically, this is a period of time when people are going to make decisions of whether they follow God or not. All the way up to this period of time, the devil is around. For 1,000 years here, you know why there's a millennial reign on this earth with human people in their bodies for 1,000 years? God to shut the mouths of all mankind. Because some people I've heard say, if I'd have been back in that garden over there with Adam, I wouldn't have done what he did. For 1,000 years, they don't even have Satan. And they're going to do it anyway. There's going to be a whole lot of them that's not going to make it into the eternal age. Not going to happen. Because of their volition. Volition. All right, the age of the present, that word, anestotos, anestotos, say that word, anestotos. anestotos. All right, that means to stand in. It comes from stasia and in, to stand in, standing in, all right? In this present, standing in, poneru, poneru means what? Mm -hmm. Poneru is sin. You know, you can even look at this word as love. <coughs> love. But it's a twisted sort of love. Twisted. Okay? Perverted sort of love. This is the word for homosexuality. Same word. This is the root of it. This is the word for prostitution. <coughs> This is the word for practiced scheming evil. All right, that's that's in this everything. That's all in this word right here. Kata, kata means what? That's a little preposition. Page two hundred thirteen. If you want to write it down, 
Yeah, this little analytical lexicon right here. Here's the analytical lexicon. Have you seen one of these? This analytical lexicon. An analytical lexicon tears down every word and tells you what part of speech it is, and then the roots. And on page 213 in this word, in this book, you will find that little word right there. So you get one of these, and you can look up kata. There kata is right there on the right hand side of that page. See, there it is. You can look up how it's used and translated and everything. And you can find that it's Donovan's uh, Greek. English analytical lexicon. You can find it in uh, on eBay or whatever you or some some of these books.com or whatever. It hasn't been in print for a long time, but that's the best analytical lexicon that I've ever seen. That's the best. There are other lexicons that are like Thayer's and Littleton and Gettin, uh, Bauerart and Gingrich. Uh, all of these different, Liddell and Scott is the grandfather of all of them. It's about this thick with little tiny writing in it. It's this thick. It is what we call profane and ecclesiastical Greek. It goes into all Greek. That, that Greek lexicon, but it is, it studies the roots. It's not an analytical. That is an analytical lexicon. If you look up one word here, you can tell what number, gender, and case it is, or all about what kind of verb it is. It's in that little book. About 444 pages, I think. Out of this age, the evil age, according to Tolthilamah, Tolthilamah, according to the spiritual activating force, that's what the word Thilamah, Thilamatos means, the spiritual activating force. John, or not John, but Ephesians, the first chapter, I really like that. It tells about the will of God. Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. I'll read it to you just a little bit. If I can find it, I know I had it in my Bible. <coughs> Paulus Apostles, Priest do and see, Dia Thelematos. Right there, Thelema, Thelematos. According to the spiritual activating, Paul an Apostle of Jesus Christ, through the spiritual activating force of God. Right? Thelematos. The spiritual activating force of God. See, he uses these different terms in his letters. Right? Out of this age, this present evil one, according to the spiritual activating force of God belonging to God. Okay? And the Father of us. God, even the Father of us. He is our Father. He is our God. Okay? Now, we looked last week, I think we looked at a word Adelphos, didn't we? Did we look at the word Adelphos? What does the word Adelphos mean? Adelphos. Ah, and Delphos. Uh, well, we can say it's brother, Adelphi, sister. What? Brethren. Uh, brethren, all right. But what does it literally mean? Break it all, all the way down. From the same womb. Uh, what? From the same womb. From the same womb. That's why I want it. Yep. <laughs> Young man, you got an A plus tonight. That's what I was fishing for. All right. From the same womb. Okay? From the same womb. Now, when we're born of God, we're born from the same womb, aren't we? Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God the Father are one. There aren't three of them. There's only one God. That's it, one God. Okay? You're not going to see three of them. You're going to go, this physical expression of God is Jehovah, Jesus. Okay? That's what you're going to see in heaven. Now... <clears throat> Snatch us out of this present age. Now, in this present age, we have the doctrine of Cain. The doctrine of Cain. What's the doctrine of Cain? The Jew talked about the doctrine of Cain, didn't he? What's the doctrine of Cain mean? That means works for salvation. What did Cain do in the garden? Cain, when it came time to offer sacrifice, as the yearly came by, you know that they tied in the garden of Eden? They tied. They did. They tied. It said that he made an offering. That word there is tied. That means to cut straight. That offering was he cut straight. He divided correctly. He, he gave his offering. Abel did. And he gave an offering of the, it said, of the firstborn of his form. So an animal died. Now, when God 
After Adam sinned, what did God do to the ground? He cursed the ground because of Adam. He cursed the ground because of Adam. So then we, the ground is cursed, isn't it? So every fruit and vegetable from the ground is coming from a cursed ground. Right? Now, when Cain brought his offering, he did it from the, it says, by the sweat of your nostrils, you will earn your living, your bread, lahem. All right? By the sweat of your nostrils, you will earn, earn your bread. And what did Cain do? He brought, it says, from the first fruits of his ground. He brought a cursed offering from a cursed ground, and he bought the wrong amount. He not only brought the wrong offering, the cursed offering from the cursed ground, but he brought the wrong amount. He was a tightwad with God, and God would not look with grace upon his offering because he was disobeying God. He wanted to do it his way. Religion in this world, the Lord way back yonder founded a religion. And the first man to defy it was Cain. The first man to defy God's religion was Cain. And what did he do after he, after he uh, defied God's religion? There was one down there that was serving the Lord with truth and in truth. But what was his old name? Abel. By the way, what does Cain mean? What's Cain mean? It means God. Genesis 4 and 1. Does anyone have Genesis 4 and 1? Let's look at that for just a minute. This is Eve's statement of faith, by the way. This is Eve. Hava. This is Eve's statement of faith. Okay? Let's look at that. Genesis 4 and 1. Book of Beginnings. Genesis. All right? The book of Father Sheep. Uh, Randall. Now the man had relations with his wife, Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. And she said, I have gotten a man-child with the help of the Lord. All right. Now what it really says in Hebrew, that isn't what it says in Hebrew, is it? What it says here in Hebrew, and I'll start over again with that now, Rebecca, what have you got there? Um, now Adam knew his wife. Knew okay, he had sexual relations with his wife. And she conceived and bore Cain. And she caught it. That's what it literally says. She caught the conception and held it. And said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. I have gotten a man, even the Lord. I have gotten a man, even Jehovah, the Messiah. She said, I got the Messiah. Because he got it promised that from her womb would come the Messiah. So she thought the Messiah was born. Okay? I have gotten a man, even Adonai, or even Jehovah. That's, this is what it says, right? There. That word right there. Look it up in Hebrew. You got your Hebrew with you tonight, brother? No. Okay. It's there. I have gotten a man, even Jehovah. Now, she thought that she had born, brought forth the Messiah. And what a mistake she made. Because this son that she had, and she probably had three or four kids at a time. She could have multiple births because that, a woman can have a thousand children physically able for a woman. She has a, enough uh, eggs in her ovaries to bring forth a thousand children. That comes all the way back from Eve because she probably had a thousand children. Okay? Now, I know, Rebecca, that you really don't look forward to having a thousand children. <laughs> Dakota? Thousand children. All right. That's it's capable. A woman is capable of having a thousand children. And on this one here, it says, I have gotten a man child with the help of the Lord. That's right. That's not right. It isn't? Even the Lord. Even the Lord. Yes. Even the Lord is what it says. I have gotten a child, even for the Lord. The Lord. Jehovah. What it literally says. Okay? Now let's go on, see if I can get back to where I was going. Cain's religion was opposed to God's truth. And the first thing that he did after he set up his altar, brought the wrong offering, 
called the wrong amount. And then when God looked uh, look favorably upon him, what did he do to his brother? Remember Dakota? What did Cain do to Abel? Kiss him? Shake his hand? Take him an offering? What did he do to him? Got him out there in the woods someplace and killed him. Not only did he kill him, but it says in Hebrew that he slashed him and slashed him and slashed him. He just kept on what we call overkill. He slaughtered him. He slaughtered him. And then Jehovah spoke, speaks to Cain. And Jehovah says, Where's your brother? Why am I my brother's keeper? And he said, Your brother's blood cries to me from the mouth of the ground. The mouth of the ground. The mouths of the ground sucked his blood up. And he said, Your brother's blood cries to me from the mouths of the ground. It testified. He polluted the ground. Now the ground was cursed before. Now it's going to be double cursed for Cain. He thought he was a good farmer. He thought he could bring in his crops and do whatever he wanted to. He said, now the ground is going to be double cursed because of, because you have cursed the ground by shedding your brother's blood on the ground. So now the one they thought that was a Messiah is a murderer simple as that. The so-called Messiah is a murderer. Did you hear this before in place, brother? No. Have you, Rebecca? Just here. <laughs> All right. Maybe this is new news to some of you. This is Hebrew and Greek, okay? There's a lot of good stuff in Hebrew and Greek that you just miss in the English translation. Matter of fact, the book of Genesis has never been translated. It's interpreted and not translated. That's a whole lot of difference. And we, on Sunday night, when I've been teaching this, they've been so crazy about it, they're teaching it all over the place, showing them the videos and the classes. Boy, it means a lot when you study from the original languages. You see so much. All right, the spiritual activating force of God, the Father of us. Well, he slaughtered his brother. False religion always persecutes the truth. When the Lord founded his church, the devil founded hundreds of them. And <clears throat> all of those state churches persecuted little old Baptist churches all the way down through the ages. There was a book one time a man wrote called The Trail of Blood. He trailed God's churches by the blood that they were shed on the ground. They shed their blood on the ground for what they believed. Again, we have Cain persecuting Abel all the way. 1 Corinthians 15 and 3, Galatians 2.20, Romans 5 and 6. These are all part of this. And out of this age, Matthew 13.22 and Matthew 6.23, it talks about that. Look at Matthew 13 and 22 if you can, if you've got uh, uh, Matthew Gospel according to Matthew. Matthew 13 and verse 22 and then 6.23. Have you got that, Randall and... And the one on whom seed was sown among the thorns, 13.22? And the one on whom seed was sown among the thorns, this is the man who hears the word, and the worry of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth show the Okay, word. the worry of the age, the age we live in. Isn't this, doesn't this age call for so much worry today, trying to put food on the table and all that kind of stuff? And we forget to look at the eternal things so many times. All right, 623, Rebecca. 623. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? What is it talking about? The, the blinding of this age. Why Jesus in John the third chapter talking to Nicodemus, a master teacher of Israel, he knew what being born again was. That why every Jew, every non-Jew that came to there and came to uh, Judaism had to be born again. He had to shave his head. He had to denounce his old ethnic nationality and be baptized, dipped. Die to it and be raised anew. 
to Judaism, and that's what they call being born again. All right? He knew what it was. And he said, what do you mean you must be born again? What he told him. What he told Nicodemus is, Nicodemus, you're dirty. Your religion's no good. And that's what Paul is telling these people here. Their religion, the same religion that Nicodemus had, is dirty. It's the religion of Cain. The religion of Cain. All right. Darkness. Jesus told Nicodemus. He said, in 3, 16, 17, 18, all down through there, he says, the light is coming to the world, but the, the world receives it not, because the world is in what? Darkness. Ephesians 3.21 <clears throat> is a beautiful doxology. And now we have another doxology here in 1 and verse 5. Galatians 1 and 5. Ho. Hey. Hey. Doxal. Ace. Tus. Aeonas. Tone. Aeonion. A lamp. Now, this is a short verse, but I'm going to tell you some people I could teach an hour on this verse because there's some good stuff in it. Okay. It's a beautiful doxology. <clears throat> it's to whom the glory unto the ages of the ages. Amen. All right. What is the word for age? Our eternity in Hebrew. Aeon Tonion. All right? That's what it is here. Ages upon ages upon ages. But what's the word for eternity in Hebrew? Do you remember? Olam. Olam. For eternity. In Genesis uh, the 3 and verse 22, look there. In Genesis 3 22, and that's what the word Lehoam is what it literally says. <clears throat> Genesis 3 22. Genesis 3 22. Rebecca, what you have? Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now thus to put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. That's the word forever right there. For eternity. O long. Ace, Tony, on, Tony, on. Now what is the ace? Is the extension or limitation of thought or verbal action in it? That's a, in the New Testament, in Greek, that's a sign of direct object. It's ace, page 119, in the analytical Greek lexicon there. <clears throat> page 119, somewhere around there. <clears throat> There's quite a little bit on this ace right here. Extension or limitation of thought or verbal action. Right there. In that little book. Page 119 tells you all about it right there. Now, when you see that in Greek, you know that some act action is taking place. That, that's a pointer. It's like an arrow that says this next thing is going to be receive action. Now, in Hebrew, what is that? Yeah. Just like that. Okay. Yeah. Sign of direct option. Right? Sign of the direct option. Gotten to me a man at Jehovah. Even Jehovah. Right? To whom the glory, the doxa, honor, respect, spiritual praise. Unto ace, extension or limitation of thought or verbal action above and beyond is what it's talking about. Tus. Accusative plural. Ionos. <coughs> Accusative plural ages. Of the. Of the. Tone. Genitive plural. Genitive plural. I don't want to put down singular. I have to put plural down. I must have been asleep when I did that. <coughs> Genitive plural. Of the ages. Ages of the ages. Ages of the ages of the ages. Ephesians 3.21, let's look at that. Ephesians 3.21. Ephesians 3.21. Here's another talk about the ages of the ages of the ages. This is eternity. This is about as well as you could describe eternity. Uh, what do you have there, Rebecca? Ephesians 3.21. 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 
To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Ages upon ages upon ages upon ages is what it says. Ages without end. This is what we call a, a doxology. Romans 9 and 5, Romans 11, 36, Romans 16, 20, 27, Ephesians 3, 21 that we just led, read, and then 1 Timothy 1 and 17. All right? Now, amen. That seems real simple, doesn't it? Say amen. 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 All right. Now, what did you just say? <coughs> All right. From Paige and Brown Driver and Briggs, from page 52. All the way through here, and all the way over here, and all the way over here, all the way down there is Amen. That's a pretty important word. To have take up all of that room in a Hebrew lexicon. Page 52 through page 54. Alright, the whole thing. Alright, over here in this book, this is a Gesenius Hebrew lexicon. Here we have that word Amen again. There it is. Look at all of this. All about Amen. Okay? Now the word Amen in Greek came from Hebrew. The word Amen in Hebrew came from Persian. Our word in English came from Greek, which came from Hebrew, which came from Persian. Alright? <clears throat> That's what all this means. Let's look at the word Amen for a minute. Amen. Right there it is. Okay. That's the Greek. Amen. That's what it looks like in Hebrew. Okay. Amen. Amen. Let's look and see what some of the things it says. It means a particle of affirmation in Greek. It's also a, an adjective and describes the faithful one. Was talking about Jesus. Okay. In Revelation 3.14. Now, I've told you a little bit about this word before. It just We looked over it and we passed over it. So let's, let's look at it with a microscope tonight, okay? This word on man also means a covenant. It literally means, in this little book right here, it's kind of short, but one that says it means to prop up, to stay, to support, to... to uh, Sustain, sustain. It means to support with a with an arm. It means to carry. One who carries and cares for. One who sustains the nourishment. What is the word for Almighty in Hebrew? The Almighty God. Jehovah what? Huh? El Shaddai. El Shaddai means all powerful one. Almighty. But what does it really mean, El Shaddai? God is El, and Shaddai means a woman's breast. It means the nourishing one, but the one who, who carries you. Have you ever seen the, the, the story, the poem about the footprints in the sand? Mm -hmm. You know, where God was carrying me, you didn't see the footprints, and didn't see my footprints, but God was carrying me. All right means to nourish, sustain. It means to build up, to prop up. It means a column. It means to found. It means a foundation. Okay? <clears throat> Ephesians, I mean, uh, Psalm 132 and verse 11. Who is the foundation of our salvation? Huh? The Apostle Paul knew Hebrew, and he was making a little Hebrew play right here. He brought this Greek, this Hebrew word into Greek, and the Hebrews knew what he's talking about. Some of the Hebrews speaking Hebrew, okay? This means it means a column, it means a foundation. It's also an attribute of God. All right, an attribute of God. It means established, it means sure, with confidence, it means very... Verified, it means reliable, trusty, it means to believe, 
It means perfect faithfulness, and it means truth. Jesus said, I am the what? I am the truth. I am the way and the truth. All right? Truth. He was saying, oh, man. When Jesus talked to the Pharisees, said, the first thing he said to them, they would say at the end of the thing, whenever they made a statement, they would say, oh, man, at the end of the statement. When Jesus started the statement, he said what to them? Amen, amen. Most affirmatively, surely, this is a covenant. This is a fact. This is established. This is a foundation. There were two pillars in the front of the in the front of the temple. They didn't hold up anything. Boaz and Jacob. That's what the names was. It means in his strength. In his confidence, in his strength, in his word, in his power. All right? The two pillars that held out there in front. Boaz was what? The lineage of Jesus Christ came to Boaz. Didn't it? Boaz. In his strength, Boaz, in his strength, redeemed Ruth. The whole book of Ruth is simply the kinsman redeemer story to show you how God was going to redeem us in his strength. All right, in his strength. <clears throat> and he established it. Psalm 132, verse 11. Did you get there, Randall? <clears throat> He's a faithful witness. The He's Lord has sworn to David a truth from which he will not turn back. Of the fruit of your body I will set upon your throne. All right. He said to David, and this Davidic covenant is an unconditional covenant. And the unconditional covenant today is a covenant of salvation. It is unconditional. It has no conditions. You don't have to be circumcised today. You don't really have to be baptized today. You should be, but you don't have to. Because that's different. All right? That's when you signed the covenant. God signed the covenant in your heart and gave you his spirit. All right? Psalm 132 and verse 11, that's beautiful. Exodus 34 and verse 6, Revelation 3, 14, Isaiah 16 and verse 5, Jeremiah 10 and 10, Jeremiah 23 and verse 28, Isaiah 22, 23 through 25. These are all about the little word, Amen. The little word, Amen. It means a covenant. Amen. Jesus said, truly, truly, a covenant, a covenant. When Israel went up, when Moses went up on Mount Sinai, when he came down, he read the law down. Every time he'd read the law, Israel would say what? Amen. I make a covenant with you. I'll stand behind it. I'll do it. I establish it. And God made a barith with them. He made a covenant with them. All right. That word amen has covenanted. In the... Uh, <coughs> In the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation 3.14, let's look at that, Revelation 3.14, and Jeremiah 10.10, 10, and I'm going to turn you loose here, we could, you know, we could have done the whole class on the oh, <laughs> Yeah, that's a beautiful word. People just look over that word. All right, have you got it there, Rebecca? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And to the angel of the church of the Laodicean, Laodicean. Laodicean uh -huh. right? These things says the Amen, the faithful the and the true amen. witness, the beginning of the creation of God. All right. The, the, let's read it real slow. This who's, who said this? The Amen. These things says the Amen. Amen. Who is the Amen there? That is a uh, uh, an adjective describing who? Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Is Jehovah our covenant God? Mm -hmm. Is he our covenant God? Jehovah is a covenant God. When he's talk, talking about, in the second chapter of Genesis, when he starts talking about God dealing with man, he's Jehovah. He's a covenant God. All right. So here we have the covenant God, and he's called there in the book of Revelation. And who is this covenant God? The faithful and true witness. Uh-huh. The beginning of the creation of okay, God. Okay, now the word beginning there, it shouldn't be that way. It should be the head of the creation of God. The master. 
builder. By the word, the word amen means master builder. It also means master builder, the one who laid a foundation. Abraham looked for a city whose builder, amen, was God. His foundations, foundations, pillar, foundation, all in the word amen. Okay, go on a little bit further now. I know your works, uh -huh. that you are neither cold nor hot. Okay, that's Laodicea. Guess what? That's the age we live in. The Laodicean church age. 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 What, did we look at that word age a little bit more? The present, according to the present age. Aona. This present age. We live in this age, don't we? Now, doxologies, in the Bible, we looked at the different doxologies. Hebrews, uh, or not Hebrews, but uh, Ephesians 3, 21, Romans 9, 5, 11, 36, 16, 20, uh, 7, and uh, 1 Timothy 1, 17. These are all. Jeremiah 10 and 10. Let's look there before we go any further. Jeremiah 10 and 10. The book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah. It says there in the first part of the book of Jeremiah, the word, the, the bar of Jehovah. Now, that's a funny play on words to use. The Word, and the Word was Jehovah. When they came upon the name of God, it's Jehovah. Right? Jehovah, the Word, even Jehovah. Jesus said, it says, in my Word. Did he? To the Pharisee, in my Word. And they said, it's in your Word, but the other Word was Him. He was the Word. Uh, Rebecca, what do you have? But the, uh, but the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. All right. Right there. He is the uh, Amen. In the Lord, Jehovah is Amen. In Revelation 3, 14, it says he is the Amen. He is the King of the universe. Mm -hmm. The word Adonai Ha'adonai. Adonai Ha'adonai. Okay, that means the Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Adonai means Lord of Lord, King of Kings. But right there, that is a beautiful Jehovah, Adonai Ha'avanim. The Lord, Jehovah, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And right there it says he is the King of the Universe. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the King of the Universe. And one of these days he's going to take it back and boy am I going to be glad. <laughs> I'm getting tired of this other rascal. And he told me that with all men, which means covenant. He swore by himself because none is greater, according to the Old Testament, the 22nd chapter of, of, uh, of Genesis, and also over there in the book of Hebrews. He swore by himself because there was none greater. Did you like these verses, Tom? Did you learn a little bit from them? When you start looking deep into these things, you see all kinds of stuff. All right, I will. I told you on page uh, uh, 52, 53, 54, and then in Gesenius's grammar or, or Greek lexicon is on page uh, number 58 and 59, and all the way over on page 60, even. If you want to look that word, all man up. I have used that word before. I've referred to it and told you a little bit about it. But, boy, we looked at it a little better tonight. We can look at it for an hour as far as that goes. We can look at all these verses. All right. Any questions before I turn you loose on the world? Go out and do something eternal. Go out and do something beyond this age. You know, you can go out and do something that's going to follow you in eternity. You're going to do it anyway. Because <laughs> what we do does follow us. Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. it does follow us. Young man, what is your name? Uh, David. David. That's a good name. Oh, that's a good name. you have any questions? Uh, Randall, Rebecca, Dakota, Marilyn? Any of you have any questions? None? All right. David, would you mind dismissing us in prayer tonight? Would that be all right? Uh, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for uh, your teaching tonight. I pray that, uh, that you teach our minds and our hearts and let you know each day. Thanks for the time we can share together, studying and learning Amen. Well, we came here tonight just to brag on Jesus a little bit, didn't we? And I think you did. An old preacher said, if you run out of soul, just brag on Jesus. 
And this is what day of the month? 27. Boy, it doesn't hardly seem like it's uh, the year 2010. That doesn't hardly seem possible. I was born in the first half of the last century. And here we are, <laughs> I'm over here in, in this century. <laughs> Boy, that's a long time. But I'm glad that I'm still here and God give me enough brains to still te teach a little bit, even though I have to refresh my mind every day. Well, God bless you. Go out and do something eternal. Thank <laughs> you.